about the community, the fans that have um, have been around the Halloween franchise for over 40 years. It's, it, this is a movie that, to me, is a is a is a love song, a tribute to the fans. It's a a love song to Lori and Michael and whatever. Um, uh, whatever their relationship is, is something I want to explore. And and how everyone from her granddaughter Allison to a new kid on the block, how they observe this relationship is something I want to explore. So for me, it's a chance to um, turn up the music, kind of dial in the intimacy a little bit, and let this world of Haddonfield unleash. Our first film was trying to restore the trust that a lot of fans had lost in the franchise, invite new people to this, the, this mythology, um, and work within a framework with beloved characters. Our second one was having fun with that, that, the initial success and being able just to open it up to the chaos and, and the kind of funhouse ride that Halloween Kills was for, for me and my co-writers. Um, and then with Halloween Ends, we felt like we needed to put our own passionate signature on top of these characters. So it's been an evolution. When we meet Michael in this chapter. He's been out of the headlines for four years. He's kind of gone dormant, and he's found this place where he uh, resides, and, and the mask is, is decayed and mold and mildew on it, and, and he's in bad shape. And he's gone, basically, he's gone... He's gone away to rot, you know, kind of like an animal will just walk into the woods uh, and, and die. And I think he's kind of awaiting that uh, when he meets uh, an unlikely new uh, colleague. <laughs> and and, that, and the, I think the energy that they feed off of each other in some ways reawakens what he's capable of. She's processed, she's reflected, she's writing her memoir. Um, she's got uh, a loving granddaughter and she's got friends around her. Um, she's taking every step she can to toward a new path, a healthy path, a, a healthy mindset. And then, as often happens, Michael Myers gets in the way. Jamie's not just the star of the movie, but she's uh, someone I, I, I call on a Sunday and say, I'm rewriting the scene for tomorrow and something's not landing. What would Lori do? And, and so, so there is that, that voice that I think keeps a truth of Jamie Lee in the character that we're creating, which is really important to me. She brings ideas to the table, but she's not possessive of those ideas. It is amazing to have someone that's as um, nuanced and brings as much insight to this character, but at the end of the day is going to agree with the artists that are collaborating with her to create this world. You know, um, she, she doesn't bring her ego, she brings her energy. She brings that beautiful attitude and charisma that she has. She's 45 minutes early to set every day.